I haven't. I've been trying to think of the right way to talk about it. I wanted to throw it up on my Facebook page, but you know, Preacher presented the opportunity to do the show here today, so I guess I might as well go ahead and just do it here, open forum. I don't know about you guys, but you know, I participate in a lot of things for the World War II veterans, um, a lot of events and. Uh, homages or, or not homages that's not the word i want to use but a, a lot of things to show appreciation to those guys for what they did and a lot of people have debated and and frankly said that if it weren't for the world war ii veterans there would be nazi flags pretty much flying around here today and i don't have any doubt that that is absolutely 120 percent correct but something i just saw on the uh, i guess i think it was a history channel maybe a and e but i'm thinking history the other day was uh they were doing, a, I guess, a special on Vietnam, okay? And uh, I don't recall exactly. I tuned in probably towards the tail end of it, so I couldn't tell you the, the entire gist of the show. But from what I could see and what I saw when I tuned in, they were talking about uh, the welcoming that the soldiers received when they came back home. And I don't know if you guys have seen it. Most of you guys probably witnessed it who are listening. You guys saw it. The Vietnam soldiers were spit upon, hated, disrespected, insulted, berated than anything I've ever seen. And in my opinion, that was wrong. Now, you can sit there at home and you can argue with the point that, well, they should never have gone to Vietnam anyway. That is true. But that... You know, or you know, that's debatable, whatever you want to say. But the fact of the matter is, is that these men and women went overseas to a cause they believed threatened freedom. You know, and it's been plaguing me on my mind. My dad is a uh, Vietnam veteran. Now, he didn't see any actual uh, battle time. He wasn't in any major battles, but he did go to Vietnam. They basically made him work while he was there. They trained him as a plumber. He was... He never saw any real combat, but he was trained as a plumber. He worked over there. He did what he had to do. Hey, Uncle Sam tells you, hey, I want you to lay down some plumbing. You do it. <laughs> but he has on occasion shared with me and my mother, of course, because they both were during that time. They shared with me a lot of stories in regards to the Vietnam veterans and how they were treated when they returned home. From doing there. 219-845-1100. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and uh, I was fortunate. I've heard a lot of stories about how they were sped on and called baby killers and everything. But what I found out when I got home, well, I was 20 by the time I was there and back. I was in my early 20s. Yeah. I mean, tw well, I was 20, not quite 21, I meant to say. And uh, I go to the local bar. They let me in. They knew I wasn't of age, but... I got. I had no disrespect there at the bar. You know, there were veterans. Some you would admit it. Some wouldn't say anything. But uh, I found out I'm from Hammond, and I, I run around in North Hammond and everywhere just about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it to be when you got more in your own neighborhood instead of like at the airports mm. or something where they had uh, the demonstrators and stuff. That's where you got a whole lot of the disrespect. Mm -hmm. But as far as I, I noticed myself when I got back in May of 70 was that uh, when you when you got home, you know, with your buddies and, and stuff, I you know, you were respected. And, and I always appreciate it. Good. I'm glad. But, that. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you. There's there weren't treated right. And uh, I know they had uh, things they tried to do in, I think it was the late 70s or whatever. I was out of work. And they had a big thing in Chicago where they wanted uh, veterans to welcome home and stuff. I, I I didn't go. I don't know if you remember that. It was either the late 70s or early 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I kind of wished I had a went. I have never went to none of these uh, things where they want to welcome, uh, you know, Vietnam veterans especially or veterans. But uh, yeah, maybe someday I'll go, you know. I, Ten four. Yep. Well, I appreciate you talking well, about that. I appreciate that, you. It's not a dead issue. It's, it's still on the hearts and minds of a lot of people. Well, I appreciate your service, and I thank you for that, my friend. Okay, you have a great and day. Hello, you, you too. Yes. Go ahead, sir. 
Okay, I just wanted to comment on this. I'm a, a Vietnam era veteran, mm -hmm. 67 through 71 in the Navy. I uh, volunteered for Nam three times. They wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, send me over there until the fourth time. But I've mm -hmm. uh, been through that issue where you get spit on, middle of winter, you get uh, pop, coffee, everything thrown on you. Yeah. Because you're a piece of crap, you know. Well, you know, and that's what I'm talking about. That, it, to me, is a major wrong. It needs to be justified. And I know it's years and years and years later. It's kind of, to most people, it'll seem like a mute point. You know, well, I, I could have used this back then. Why do I get this now? You know, and I understand that. But I, in my opinion, Art, there's never a time frame on to make something right. Well, you know, we did it so we have the freedoms we have today. You know, mm -hmm. it's a very emotional topic. I understand, Art. You know, <laughs> living through this and having people spit at you mm -hmm. and treat you like a piece of dirt when you're fighting for them so they have their freedoms. You got it. You know, I mean, right. it, it just... Uh, every time this topic comes up, it just tears me apart, you know. I, mean, I understand. It, it's, you know, it's ain't right. And, uh, you know, uh, been there, done that. We've done it for the right reasons. We went there so everybody had their freedom. So even if we didn't agree with it, they had a voice. You got it. You know, and and people do not realize this, why we did this stuff. I mean, we're willing to lay our lives down. Wherever they send us, whatever they want us to do, we do it. And uh, if we come back, we don't. You know, I, I've been to D.C. a couple of times, mm -hmm. go on the wall, I see a whole bunch of my buddies that were there. Mm -hmm. And their names are on the walls, which, you know, uh, by the grace of God, mine's not there. So, uh, but, uh, and we have traveling walls that go around to commemorate our Vietnam vets. You know. 10 for heart. All right. I appreciate your service, my friend. And I thank you for everything that you were willing to sacrifice. We've got for. too many people thank on the horn right now. Walt, I believe, has been hanging on the longest. Walt, welcome to the region underground. Uh, there's no doubt that the, the returned Vietnam veterans were very badly treated, not only by the usual uh, pro communist uh, left wing liberal types, the Jane Fondas, the Bill Clinton, people of that ilk, but also the government. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an example, uh, the. But I was, uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and when my fighter bomber squadron got, was getting ready to deploy to Southeast Asia, virtually all the officers uh, signed papers saying that if they became a casualty, that they did not want their names to be publicized. This, now, this is like in the spring of 1966. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the so-called peaceniks, were calling the families of casualties whose names were made public and writing them letters and uh, hate calls and so forth saying, your son, your, your husband, whatever, uh, got what he deserved, blah, blah, blah. I remember mentioning this about 10 years ago to somebody from Northwest Indiana. Mm -hmm. And he told me, well, yeah, I mean, when he was a student at Purdue uh, University Calumet, one of the uh, he was taking a course I think in uh, uh, world history or something like that, and the professor told them that if you write a letter to a casual uh, to the family of a casualty, mm -hmm. saying that your son died in vain, that he he, he gave them extra. Two one nine eight four five eleven. I think Victor's been waiting on the horn for a while. What do you say, Vic? Well, hey there, big guy. What's going on, Vic? Then I, I almost choked on a lot of it. Stuff, you know, but uh, that's sure. okay. You know, the one thing that all of us did, every single one of us did when we joined, mm. we all swore to defend and protect the Constitution against people in the country. 10-4. Domestic enemies and, and foreign enemies. And that means if people are doing things that are actually diminishing the Constitution, they're diminishing our country. Because we're based, I mean, we're, we're, we're a country of laws, and we're based on those laws. And by the way, uh, uh, Mo Walt there, I respect, you know, but I mean, he's got a, you know, bigoted Republican line, of course, but he forgot to mention Mr. Nixon. Hmm. You know about Mr. Nixon? I, you know, I got, I've heard bits and pieces, Vic, but yeah, what, what is specific? He was the one that started China trade. Not to say we shouldn't have trade with them, but guess what? China was a big, you know, the big 
big bad villain of the day. And um, like I say, Richard Nixon and, um, and Mr. Kissinger, they did everything they could to start business deals back then, back in the 70s. Mm-hmm. So I didn't hear I didn't hear our friend Walt mention the Republican Dick Nixon. Ten four. Thanks, Victor. Phone lines are lit up. I got to move on, my friend. Hey, thank you for your service, hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing? Who's this? This is Roger. Roger, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, sir. Uh, uh, that, not not Victor, but the caller before him. That would be Walt. Yeah, the man, and I applaud him. The man was in the Navy. He never set foot on Vietnamese soil. He's not a Vietnam veteran. He's a Vietnam era veteran. A Vietnam era veteran. I hear you. Not a not a Vietnam combat veteran like me. I was in the hundred first Airborne. I was in the Battle of Hamburger Hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, they even made a movie about it. And uh, so I just you know, and I just want to make that clear. All right, Roger. You know, and I'm not done yet. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm not done. I'm listening. Go I ahead. just want to. I was in the second of 506 Infantry. Mm-hmm. I'm your first airborne. I was in the artillery uh, recon team. I called artillery fire at enemy positions. Mm-hmm. And I was in a lot of battles in Vietnam. And you know, you're right. And uh, you know, wh- what you're saying is right. I left Vietnam in December of 1969, mm-hmm. got home to Chicago. Here I called jets on enemy positions. Mm-hmm. I got home. I was a nobody. Mm. Uh, nobody. And I got home. I got off of O'Hara Airport. Mm-hmm. Got a taxi cab home. That's it until now. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly, Roger, what I'm talking about here. That, that you know, is to me, that's a huge wrong. Now, you can sit there and, or not you, but the people can sit there and say, well, oh, that's... 70 something years ago or 60 years ago or whatever but to me like i told uh i think it was art you know a wrong whether it was done 15 20 years ago is still wrong and if there's even the slightest chance of making something Who's... right you should hello hey this is the elephant go uh, ahead buddy. korea on that sunday morning in june of 1950 we just got done with lunch and we were nursing the hangover from the night before Mm-hmm. Uh, the Army called us, the, I was at FLV, the Army called us and told us about Korea. Mm-hmm. Three of us looked at each other, we got up, walked to the street, went next door, knocked on the front door, and asked them to take us in for two years. The guards came out, put a sign up, Korea, that way. Mm-hmm. The front door was the United States Disciplinary Barracks. Mm-hmm. You know it is Leavenworth. Mm-hmm. Okay, on Vietnam, yeah. it was Kennedy that started it, and Johnson accelerated that gave us 50,000 dead bodies. And as far as the draft dodger from Hope, Arkansas, he went to England because the senior senator of uh, in Arkansas got him a Rhodes Scholarship, and that's where he spent the war. Mm. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I think so. Who yeah, are... he has he had more strings attached to him than Howdy Doody, <laughs> and this guy has more strings attached to him than both him and Howdy Doody, <sighs> and that's it. FLV is eleven word. All right. Okay. Elvin, thank you very much, sir. And again, here, round and round it goes. Another caller. I don't know. Hello. Hey, T Rex. How you doing? What's going on? Oh, I'm I'm most impressed. I, I, I always get a good gut feeling, you know, when you meet someone at first, and I met you, and mm-hmm. I always thought you were a good kid, but now I know for sure. Oh, well, thanks. Yes, and uh, my father also was a Vietnam veteran mm-hmm. in the Airborne, and uh, a couple of Purple Hearts, and one of the callers brought up about the welcome home uh, down in Chicago. Sure. And um, I guess your dad didn't go, huh? No, I don't think he heard about it. Okay. It was uh, like twisting his arm to make him go. Really? Yes. And uh, he did go. Good. And it, uh, he saw, I think, three of his buddies. Good. But uh, I uh, admire that you're looking to for something... For the Vietnam era veterans, because 
they are getting older. Mm-hmm. And I think the idea, I have some ideas, but I'm going to ask my dad because they are the ones who were there. Right. And um, it was a meat grinder. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think going on what Elephant said, I think uh, Hillary and Bill, I think the the quote on them was they loathe the mil- military. And, uh, you know, these fellows, when they came home, they were not treated well. And also, you know, uh, none of us will ever know. And you ask your dad, dig in a foxhole or whatever it was called mm-hmm. and garden your buddies in the hole until, you know, they got a couple hours of sleep. And okay. then it was your turn to go in the hole. And this is not a life that my father chose. He was drafted. Sure. So I don't think people really realize that when they came home, like, um, just difficulties, um, Fitting back into society, many of them were ill. A lot of them were, you know, maimed and Mm -hmm. and couldn't walk again. And uh, uh, many of them are now homeless. Mm -hmm. Um, It's unless you've done it yourself. um, uh, I I, I saw some nasty pictures and and, and, and nasty stories uh, I've heard from my dad and his buddies that never make the news, you know. No, of course and, not. And um, I, I, I hope one of the veterans can come up with a, a good idea. And I did like the, the one lady's call about treating them uh, um, to something every day, maybe a homeless uh, shelter that houses them or something, mm-hmm. if people could donate time or something. But, sure. Well, you did surprise me, too, today. Well, I'm glad I did. And plus, you can take the, the, the preacher over there, so right <laughs> away, you know, you got some points going. Well, I appreciate that. Well, you take care. You too now. Bye-bye. Bye.